Woo, woo, woo. What's going on, everybody? Eric here. Um, today, I'm bringing you kind of a pros and cons, kind of a battle between the Filster 1 and the Filster 2. So we'll get straight into that. Uh, my main planning for this video would be I kind of give you guys just to show you a hands-on comparison to them. Then I'll show you how they, as far as how they holster, a um, couple different firearms, how they fit in there, you know, some cool features, and then we'll close it out from there. So getting into it, this right here is the Filster 1. For anybody not familiar and then the filster 2 I'm gonna have these set here I'll kind of go over some of the details and things that I noticed that are upgraded but also you know just looking at them you can kind of see the difference overall they're still the same profile and still the same build and everything like that if you look um, I, I won't unscrew these I suppose I could but they're pretty much just two shells separate shells one side secured by this paracord here um, you see I have mine secured, which gives you a tighter fit depending on the firearm you have. If you got a, a thinner firearm, you may want to get this a little bit tighter to secure that in more. Um, but the main feature of this holster, since it is a light bearing holster for the Streamlight TLR1, they do make Surefire models and a Mod Light model, even though they, they don't make a Mod Light for the Filster 2. So what they said they were going to do for that is just continue um, production of the Filster 1 for any of the Mod Light guys out there. So this upgrade here... Is only for the surefire guys and the and the streamlight guys. But basically the function of this is that this will accommodate any gun that can fit this light. Um, well, not any gun, they have a list of them, but for most guns. You know, for me, I'm a Smith & Wesson guy, but I have some Glocks, so I'll show you guys how those fit. And the actual chamber for the gun here fits all the way up to a full-size gun. So I'll just show you real quick. I was going to show you guys anyways on the off body. So I got a Glock 34 here. Boom, clear. No no magazine in there. So full size 5 inch gun. And sorry for the color difference. I just threw this uh, stream light on here for the video. Boom. Sorry, struggling here. I had to do that kind of off cover a little bit. But full size, um, even more than full size for this one. You know, 5 and a third inch barrel. And you see there. It has even a little bit of wiggle room and clearance, and I have a threaded barrel on this, but even with that full size, you know, six inch slide, it still doesn't peek all the way through there. So for something like that, you know, you might have the thread barrel um, stick out in there for a guy who carries appendix or whatever, you know, whatever style you carry. I primarily use appendix for this. You can see that it's, uh, it securely fits the light, even though the barrel and slide push still a little bit more forward, you can still see that it'll accommodate that. So I'll take that one off screen. And then I'll show you the other firearm I have to show you here, which is a Smith & Wesson Compact, but this one is a threaded barrel, so essentially makes this one a full size as well. So, show you here. Boom. So this one, a little bit different as far as fit goes. Even though I have both of these secured down all the way, you can see that it still secures both of these in here. I could do that with the Glock too. You know, it won't, it won't just pour out. But... You look at that, that one, the light fits all the way in there. And since it's a compact slide, you can see that there's quite a bit of space since this is essentially just, uh, you know, the four inch barrel, but it has a threaded barrel with the comp. So it makes it almost that same size that the Glock 34 is, but see, it fits it just fine. Do real quick is just go over the main differences as far as the body and what they, what they come with. So the original Filster came with the belt loops already attached. What they did with the Filster 2 is um, they come standard with the discrete carry clips because most people, and I'm one of those people, changed the, either the belt loops that came with the original Filster with the discrete carry clips or they changed the plastic clips. You know, some of them also came with those for the metal. These are pretty much almost industry standard on most holsters, especially concealed carry wise. They have the lip right there to catch onto your belt and they're durable, you know, metal, durable, sturdy but hard to source. So that's what, you know, made these be out of stock for a long time when everybody caught on because everybody wanted the discrete carry clips over the belt loops or the plastic clips. So now Filster 2 comes standard with them. One cool thing that they do is if you already had the Filster 1 like me in my case and you modified it to get the discrete carry cl uh, clips, these are like 40 bucks themselves. So that's kind of a paywall and would make some people mad who are seeing the Filster 2 come standard with them. It's like, man, I already paid $40 for it. 
something that they do is I think I got this one for like 138 bucks with the clips. They also offer the models that are just the shell. So you get all the other features except for the discrete carry clips for like 110 or 18 bucks. Don't quote me on that. I'll put the link below if they're still in stock. And you could just take your existing ones off, same screws and everything like that. I think they even give you the screws for the clips, just not the clips themselves, which is nice. But tangent over, we'll go into like uh, main body differences. So as I was saying before, both of these are still just two shells put together, secured the same way. So you got the kind of rubber stoppers there. You can tighten these down if you need a little bit more torque, um, depending on the firearm you have. You want them to be a little bit more firmly fit in there. You can... um as you can see, I'll just show you on this one. You could screw those down a little bit more to kind of secure the fit if you want it a little bit tighter. Back there, if you're a lefty, which is nice about these, they're ambidextrous. You just take everything from the right side. I guess it's kind of hard just flipping both of them over. Take everything from the right side, boom, put it on the back. I'm a right-hander, so I just leave it like this. It comes accommodating right-handers from the factory. Um, as I also stated earlier, this one gets... Um, both of them came with a different wing, so if you wanted the smaller wing as opposed to the longer one. Um, but it is new to the Filster 2. You do get this other paracord, and that's just to accommodate different firearms depending on what you're using for it. Um, other than that, without speaking the obvious, I mean, both of those come with the same bungee system. Again, I'm jambling myself up there. But they come with the same bungee system, so... One side doesn't have the screws, this side has the screws on it, the other side will have the bungee cord system. And what you can do for this, you see I have these locked in together, which makes it a tighter fit, of course. So as you can see, in my case, it fits both my Glocks and my Smith & Wesson like this. Or even if I have them undone and just have one of these, you know, which is what I have on here, I just have the bottom one secured in. And that locks my, you know, locks the torque up pretty nice and keeps the gun in there firm. So as you can see, when I turned it down there... The gun didn't fall out, which is nice. The main big difference is, is the outer shell. And especially on this one, since it's the TLR1 model, I'll show you kind of the difference there. You, you can pretty much already see kind of the height difference of the light stops a little bit higher up. This one goes a little bit down, which as you can see here, the light itself actually stops the same place that the original filter does. But there's a little bit more space there which you think would make it a little bit more uncomfortable, but it actually makes it a little bit more comfortable because it kind of rounds that spot out a little bit and more naturally contours to your body. And speaking of the contour, the reason that it has all these, I guess you could call them lines. I like to call them ribbing, but you know, everybody's got their own, <laughs> everybody's got their own um, way they're going to describe it. This is actually made to keep the airflow a little bit better. Now, in my testing, the main problem with appendix carry is um, and I'm still going to carry like it most people are, but you get a lot of sweat buildup there in your abdomen region and it tends to just kind of stick there all day. So if you don't go change your shirt out, you know, you're going to have a lot of sweat buildup, especially if you're in a hotter environment right behind your holster there. And it may cause some chafing or issues like that because you're moving around. If you're moving around a lot, holsters rubbing around on your chest or I guess not your chest, my bad, your abdomen, you know. And it can make some uncomfortable spots or some hot spots, as people may call them. So in my testing, you know, I've worn it for the past couple of days at work, you know, full eight, nine hour days. And it still causes some sweat buildup, but it is not as substantial as something like this is. So it does it does work for what they're marketing it to do. But it's essentially supposed to give you some more airflow if there is some sweat buildup. Um, you know, it can kind of go off to the side so it's not just staying in one natural spot there so you're not just taking off your holster at the end of the day and the whole bottom of your t-shirt is drenched you know so it it kind of makes that a little bit more smoother there and if you're a guy who sweats a lot that may cause some rusting on certain firearms that you have so it kind of helps with that um but other than that you can see that they're still both the same type of setup and they also took away so as you can see here the reason that it has the holes at the top is for the belt loops the belt loops have to sit up naturally a little bit higher to clip on. Since the belt loops don't come anymore out of the box with the Filster 2 here, and it's just discrete carry clips, um, that's, that's why those holes are not there. So if you're a guy who loves belt loops and that's very important to you, then go with the Filster 1. 
But if you're somebody, which most people are, guys who go with the discreet carry clips, I think that the Filster 2 is a worthy upgrade. Now, is it worth it to just go out and buy a whole new holster? That's up to you. In my case, what I did was I bought this one, and as of this video, sold this one for the price I got it for, so I can't be mad at that. So I kind of recouped the cost on this, and, and that's why I didn't just take these clips off and put them on here. I just decided to do a package deal, be nice for whoever got this one, because both of these are for viable options, but you'll kind of see when I do the on body that, at least in my opinion, being a slimmer guy, this one wasn't as comfortable. I was getting in this hot spot region here, like at the bottom where the light is, um, no matter I wore, you know, the Glock 34 or my MMP Compact, whenever I'd secure this down to my belt, this bottom part where the light is would kind of poke into my groin where after doing like a week of testing or so with this one this little bit more added length that they give you in front of the light helps a lot at least for me when it when it uh, comes to comfort wise so I either really had to torque my belt down to the point that it was uncomfortable on my hips to kind of get this one to sit where I wanted it to sit and again for my body type I'm like five seven 145 pounds um, you know more of a slimmer build so this kind of sits right on my abs and then right poking into my groin, which this part is, which is not the most comfortable. Could I do it? You know, I still carried it for a while and just went through it. And it's not like I came home and my body was all beat up and hurt, but something to think about. You know, comfort is very important. And what you could do is throw a wedge on the back, which is what I did with this one. I don't have it on here anymore because I was going to sell it, but the wedge does help. It did help alleviate some of that stress. But for this one, I've been running it without the wedge. And honestly, it... It works just fine like that for me. Uh, that added, you know, kind of contouring at the bottom really helps me as a slimmer guy. So if you're in that same boat or same shoes, I would probably recommend this one. Um, but if you're a guy who likes the belt loops um, or you already have one of these and it doesn't, it's not uncomfortable for you, then is the upgrade really warranted? I guess that's up to you. For me, it was like, I like that this holster is so modular, but I do want something a little bit more comfortable. And I was willing to make the, the sacrifice on buying a whole new holster because I knew that I probably could still sell this one and recoup some of the cost, which ended up working out fine like that for me. And hopefully this video helps for guys that do want to upgrade. Hopefully you can just throw yours on sale on eBay or whatever the case may be and somebody will scoop it up and recoup some of the cost. Because while this isn't as expensive as like the tier one concealed MSP or other holsters like that that are, you know, labeled to be modular light holsters, it is still, you know, from... At the date of this video, I got mine for $138, um, you know, U.S. dollars. Decent price, but the fact if you're a guy who has a lot of firearms, you like to switch it up a lot, um, you like to carry the bigger lights on your firearm, this, I think, is one of the best options for that because you don't have to go with something custom ordered that you have to wait four to six weeks for. If you have a more obscure gun, both of these, this whole idea is a great one as a whole. Right now I have the Filster 1 on body and I don't mean to look like I'm the Terminator or something with both my guns here but I did want to just have these on standby so I could kind of show you how they look inside the holster. So I'll get up close there. You see without a gun in it, it still gives you a little bit of width there. Again, I'm a slimmer dude, um, about 5'7 like I said earlier so this gives me at least an inch and a half of extra room in front of my belt which is good. Uh, well, from belly button to belt, I guess I'll say, which is good because when you are concealed carrying, especially appendix, you do want to have your pants have a little bit of space up front and it's just for this region. Now, the only downside I'll say to that, and since this is a stream light, it is going to be a wider holster overall. It does give me that effect and not having as baggy pants on and say I didn't have a bigger shirt to cover this, you can still see the outline of the holster. Now, it takes away the outline of the gun itself, which is nice, but you can still see the outline of the holster, which can be kind of, I guess, problematic for some. But you see, I put my shirt over it. It doesn't really look like anything at all. I guess the best I could kind of compare this to is like, a, you know, how to, in a retirement home, the so grandma and grandpa got the diapers on, you can kind of tell through their pants because it's like this big, you know, kind of lump there. <laughs> so I can say it almost gives you that diaper look. Um, but I'll just grab this M&P here again. Clear, clear. 
throw this in there and keep in mind this is the holster all the way cinched down with the bungee cords so it's got pretty tight retention you see there I, I try to give a good pull on that unless I really yank that out of there it's, it's gonna lay in there pretty good and you even hear the retention clicks which I'll show you right now which is nice it's good to have the click there um, I'll put my shirt over this one real quick this is the compact so it has the shorter grip you can kind of see some printing there, which is a problem I haven't all the way been able to defeat being a slimmer guy. But I'll show you on the Filster too how it looks a little bit, little bit nicer. But you'll see here, I'll just kind of show you real quick. Boom. If I'm really pressing this shirt down, and this is a size medium, but it looks like a large. You know, it's a classic medium, but <laughs> a little bit bigger overall. Most people aren't going to notice. You know, you're walking around, you're doing a lot of your movements. Boom, you can't see the firearm, and that's the main importance of any holster, in my opinion. As modular and as cool as they are, do they conceal, and are, the, are they able to do that? Pull this up. See here, I do have a delta point on this one and a magwell. So it kind of helps round out the look more, but there is some kind of hot spots and pressure points there where you got the edges of the magwell and the optics themselves. So put this one here. Grab the Glock 34, gets a little stuck on my pocket there. Again, clear, clear. This one's gonna be a different story. Now, which is nice, as you can see here, if I could, if I could get it in here, golly. Um, I still have that same retention. You notice that I didn't change any of the retention at all. The slide width is a little bit different from Glock to M&P, but you see this one fit in there just fine, and I'll show you the click, which is nice. So for me, my situation, I really don't have to like configure my holsters differently in any way. I could either grab this one or grab the M&P or one of the other M&Ps, put it in there, don't even have to configure the cords or anything like that. We look at this one, again, I do have a Magwell on here. I don't generally appendix carry this model. I generally outside the waistband this one. But with that Magwell there and a the full size grip, you, you can see it. Now, I'm sucking my stomach in a little bit, walking around kind of chest forward. You're not going to notice it all the way too much or say I had a jacket on, so it's not the end of the world. I just kind of wanted to show you guys there. Um, but if you look over as far as width-wise, it does add a little bit of width to me, but it doesn't take away from the platform itself. And even though I have a heavier gun, it's not overweighing pushing the gun forward like it's going to fall out or anything. So with this next belt on, kind of tightened down pretty good and sitting at my appropriate belt line, the gun's there. But I will say, with this setup right now, it does give me some pressure points here and here, at least on my body. And that's some of the problems that I have because over time, over the hours, this will start to kind of poke into my groin a little bit and not be as comfortable. Now, the wedge did help when I have it on there, but that is something to consider. But for all intents and purposes, conceal-wise and everything like that, this holster works fine. It does give you a little bit of mass up front, but that's, that's not terrible, you know, it, it works. And now we're going to the next. Right, filter 2 time. I'll try not to take as long with this one since a lot of the same rules still apply, but it does give you a little bit different um, feeling up front, I guess you'll see. So, right now, no gun in there. Most of the time you're going to have a gun in there, so that part's really irrelevant. I'll get up close to kind of show you the whip-wise. Still, it's the same width as the other holster. I think they tried to slim it down a little bit, but overall, at least, I don't really notice too much as far as the width of the holster. It still feels the same to me when it comes to how much space it takes up. It feels better, but as far as how much space it takes up, it's about the same. I do have the bigger wing on there. I am going to do some field testing with the smaller wing because you can still see that it does push that belt up really far forward. It gives you that canning effect, don't get me wrong. But it just adds to, I, I kind of like to streamline it a little bit more to round out the look instead of having it almost squared out. Or if you really, you know, put your shirt down on it, it kind of prints out this side more than the other side. But I'll show you this one with the M&P first. Again, clear, clear. And this one, I only have the bottom shock cord uh, tied down. So... I'll show you again that I'll do the little click for you. Not bad. Not as uh, audible of a click, but there are the ribbings on there do kind of give you a little divots, which doesn't affect your draw too much, but you do kind of got to get used to that because if you're kind of really clacking against the walls of that holster, you will feel the, you know, the ribs or the lines, whatever you want to call them. 
concealed carry check with this one. Now, in my opinion, I feel like this actually conceals a little bit better. It might just be because it's a little bit longer there. It fits a little bit more comfortable to me. But if you look there, without me even pushing my shirt or anything, you can't really tell. Now, again, if I really do the hot spots of the magwell and the optic, you can tell there. But again, my classic medium sized shirt, this doesn't really all the way give me that diaper effect. Now, if you do look again with these same pants on, you can see the outline of the holster and everything like that. And with this belt being stitched down all the way to its maximum, it is a little bit more comfortable, at least on these hot spots for me on my hips there. But I noticed after, again, working for the, at least the past two weeks that it doesn't really point into my groin as much and give me a little bit of that. My back's a little bit tired, which is, which is nice. But again, cool, cool setup there. Uh, I'll show you the Glock 34 now. Clear. Which is nice. Again, look, I only had the bottom cord. Um, locked down and it fit the Glock 34 no problems and fit the M&P no problems. It's really the main thing you want to make sure is that it's going to fit the light. So even if you have none of the cords secured, it'll make the gun a little bit loose but it'll fit all the guns in there. Um, again, adds a little bit more width to you but nothing bad. Doesn't push the gun forward like it's going to fall off the holster. This one kind of conceals this one a little bit better but I think it's just because I have that exaggerated magwell. If I didn't have a magwell or more of like a carry uh, magwell, it wouldn't be as bad. You could carry this no problem. But you'll see there, bend over and everything like that. You don't really see anything. Take that one out. Boom. No, no real problems there. I'll, I'll give you guys the audible click again. No problem. Again, not as, not as uh, satisfying as the other one, but fits in there fine. No problems. Yeah, for me, this one's a little bit more comfortable. Overall, it's, are the holsters really such a crazy leap forward? Hmm. I mean, that's for you to decide, but it doesn't give me as much sweat buildup, and it fits a little bit more comfortable, at least for my frame and my body. So, last thing I'll do is just show you guys a couple of draws, and then I'll end it there. All right, so final, final thoughts. I would go with this one. Uh, it's not just because it's the newest product out, and it's not just because, you know, it's got all the hype behind it. I do think, at least for me, and at least for the Streamlight guys, Surefire guys, I don't think you'd have that same problem with it being a little bit wider there at the bottom just because this light is wider than the uh, Surefire overall. 
So for the Surefire guys, you might not warrant the upgrade if yours is already pretty comfortable for you. I think that if this filter is a little bit uncomfortable for you, you got a similar body type to me, or even if you don't, you just notice, at least if you're a Streamlight guy, that this kind of pokes you a little bit there, or you get, it's not super comfortable with your belt cinched up, then while this one doesn't make it ultra 100% comfort, because you're still carrying a giant, I'm not going to say giant, but a piece of metal on your body at all times that's kind of like a foreign object, you're not used to it being there, this does help to alleviate some of that, you know, some of those comfort issues. So for me, I'd go with this one. Again, if you already have the Filster 1 and you're looking to upgrade and you already have the discrete carry clips, you can just order this as just the shell and do it like that and save a little bit of money there. Overall, I think that these are really solid options and, and you know, <laughs> don't beat me up too much for my draws. I was just trying to do a couple uh, couple different ones just to, just to show you how they look there. If you guys do want some shooting videos or anything like that with these, leave a comment below. But overall, I appreciate you guys stopping by today. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, I know I end up talking a while and I know I compact a lot of information into these videos, but I know when I go to research things that I like whoever I'm watching to give me as many different things that I could think about in this video so that I'm 100% or at least as confident as I can be in my purchase of one of these. So if you have any different um, experiences with them or tips with them or good wedges that you think work pretty well, leave those down in the comments below. But overall, Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for always showing that love. Sorry, guys. I'm struggling to talk right now. Thank you guys for always showing that love, and thank you for always being there. Um, I'm going to, again, keep it a little bit more consistent here, 2023, moving forward. And I do want to bring in more content like this to the channel. But I thought this would be a good one to really, you know, get, get the ball rolling with that. All right, you guys have a good day. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.